Hello learners. In this lecture, we will see what are the different methods of mixed design. And also we'll try to see what is the entire procedure of pre uh, preparing a mixed design. So coming to the different methods of mixed design, the first one, what we have is the Indian standard recommended method, which is IS10262. Uh, 2009 is the code book what we have, but it got revised. Uh, instead of 2009, we can make it as 2019. So this is a new code book what we have, right? Yeah, make it as 2019. The second method, what we have is uh, ACI method, whereas A ACI stands for American Concrete Institute method. Third one is Road Note 4 method, which is a UK method. Then we have IRC 44 method. This is IRC stand for Indian Road Congress for the construction of the road and all. We usually refer this particular uh, code book. Uh, then we have arbitrary method, we have maximum density method, we have finest modulus method, surface area method, mixed design for high strength concrete, that is a separate thing for high strength concrete. Then we have mixed design for pumpable concrete. And then we have DOE, that is a British mixed design method, right? So these are different methods what we have. But we have to concentrate only Indian standard method, which we are going to follow IS 10262-2019 code book. Now, procedure of a mixed design has per IS 10262, uh, as I mentioned, either 2009 or 2016. So this method of concrete mixed design consists of following 11 steps. First is calculating the target mean strength of a mixed proportion. That means let us say you want to prepare M40 grade of concrete. So that is my target, right? 40 Newton per mm square is my target strength. So first I need to take care of that. Second is selecting the water cement ratio. To get this, what, what is the water cement ratio you need to take? It may be 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.4 and so on. Next is based on that, once we get that, we are going to get the water content for that. Then once you have that water cement ratio, you are going to get the cement also. That is water cement ratio is equal to 0 0.4. Let us say, if you cross multiply, you will get water and the cement content. Next is finding out the volume proportion for the coarse aggregate and the fine aggregate. Because water is done, cement is done. Next is coarse aggregate and the fine aggregate. Next is the mix calculation. We have to do all the calculation for that. Next is trial mixing. Now, once you prepare all these things, you're going to get a ratio. Let us say one is to 1.3 is to let us say uh, 2.6. Then you have to do the trial mix for whatever ratio you are prepared. You need to check that for the slump test. I mean, for the workability and all, whether it is going to give us the proper slump or not. If it's not happening, then we have to keep on doing the trial mixing. Then the workability measurements, that is with the help of a slump cone, we need to check the workability so that uh, the proper slump is achieved. Next is repeating seven and eight until all the requirements is fulfilled. So unless and until we get the proper mix, we need to repeat all these steps, right? So this is a very basic way of understanding the uh, mix design. Now going to the procedure part. Yeah. So coming to the procedure part, the step one is target strength of a mixed proportion. That is F dash CK is equal to FCK plus 1.65 into S, right? So this is my, uh, where FCK is the characteristic compressive strength at 28 days and F dash CK is a target average compressive strength, right? And now let us say, if I want to prepare M25 grade of concrete, then here in the place of FCK, you're going to put 25 plus 1.65 into S. S is a standard deviation. Now, what is the grade of my concrete? 25, right? For 25 grade of concrete, what is the standard deviation given here? Four. So you have to multiply this 1.65 into four and you're going to get one answer here. Always remember, whenever we do the mixed design, if my if I want to achieve a grade of 25 Newton per mm square, I always target it for the higher value. I'm, I'm not going to design my concrete for exactly 25 because to be on the safer side and all, no, we always, if it is 25, I try to make my concrete for at least, let us say 30 Newton per mm square mm square so at least when it reaches the site when we do the construction and all at least we are going to get more than 25 so that is why you can see fck plus 1.65 into this standard deviation is what we are getting this is f dash ck that is a target average compressive strength right yeah so once this step is done next we are going to do the selection of the water cement ratio so for preliminary calculation water cement ratio has given in is456 table 5 we need to take that based on the uh, different environmental exposure condition. You can see it here. First, we have to check uh, where is my exposure condition. Let us say my exposure condition is moderate now. For this moderate exposure condition, 
or let us say my exposure condition is severe then minimum grade i have to take m20 grade of concrete and maximum i can go up to 0.50 as my water cement ratio so maximum free water cement ratio so instead of taking 0.5 you can take it as 0.4 or 0.5 it's totally up to you there is no hard and fast rule you have to take 0.45 only you can take since it's a trial mix design what we are doing we'll start with some value but code is telling that you cannot go beyond 0.50 water cement ratio for m20 grade concrete in a severe condition this is what is code is trying to tell us so we will not violate this we as far as possible we'll try to keep it below 0.50 as my water cement ratio right yeah so this is your step two. Next, coming to the yeah, I, I did a mistake here. This water cement ratio, what we have, no, uh, we we don't have to look this plain concrete. We usually go for RCC. Yeah, what do you need to know? Look into this. Sorry for that. So let us say I'm taking a uh, moderate condition, right? Yeah, I'm taking a moderate condition. So the minimum grade of my concrete is M25. For this maximum water cement ratio, what I have to go is 0 0.50. I should not go beyond that. And this is the minimum cement content. If you're putting a moderate exposure for M25 grade of concrete, minimum you have to keep 300 kg of a cement per cubic meter. So this is what the code is telling us, right? So this is a step two. Next coming to the step three, selection of water content. Yeah. So it's given here, maximum water content per cubic meter of a concrete for a nominal maximum size of aggregate. Usually for the normal RCC structure, we always go with the M20, uh, sorry, uh, 20 mm size of the aggregates, normal time. That is why the maximum water content what is allowed for a 20 mm aggregate is 186 kg. So whatever water cement ratio we try to take out from here, that answer what we get now, as far as possible, we should try to keep it below 186, right? Next is the water content in the table 4.8, what, what I'm showing you here no, is for the angular coarse aggregate and for 25 to 50 mm slump range, right? So this particular table, what you can see here, this particular table has been arrived for angular coarse aggregate and for slump value of 25 to 50 mm. Now let us say if I'm having a slump of 100 mm, then I cannot use this value directly. For that, I need to do modification because the this thing because this particular table is done only for 50 mm slump, right? So in that case, what we need to do, we, since we are doing an error, we need to put the correction factor. So that is what you can see here. The required water content may be established by trial or an increase by about 3% for every additional 25 mm slump or alternatively by use of chemical admixture confirming to IS9103. What is trying to tell is that for every 25 mm, if there is an increase in the slum, you would add about 3%, right? So let us say my slump is actually, uh, let us say I have a slump of uh, 75 mm. Let us say I have a slump of 20, 75 mm. This table is done for 50 mm slum. That means from 50 to 75, how much there is an increase? There's an increase of 25 mm, right? And what is the correction factor? It's given here for uh, every by about 3% per additional 25 for additional 25 i need to add 3% extra so that means 186 is what my code is telling this is telling this is for 50 mm but we are using 75 mm no? so 186 plus uh, what i need to do 3% of that that 3 divided by 100 into 186 why it is 186 because i need to take 3% of this 186 186 is maximum water content right so with this what i'm going to get i'm going to get the estimated slump so the next, once you're done with that, the next what you're supposed to do is calculation of the cement content. Because we know water cement ratio, water content by water cement ratio will give me the cement content. We know that water cement ratio. Yeah, we know water cement ratio. Let us say I've chosen some 0 0.4. Okay, let us see. 0 0.45 I'll take. Now I need to find cement, right? So if I want to find cement, what will happen? If a cement content will be 0 0.45, yeah, cement content will be water content divided by, let us say, this is 0 0.45 what I have taken, right, for my calculation. So what is this water? From here, I'm getting water is 191.58. So you divide this 191.58 divided by 0 0.45. That will give me the cement content in kg per cubic meter, right? So this is my step four. So, so far, what we have calculated, we got uh, water content, we got cement content. Next is proportion of volume of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate. So these things we need to find now. So how do we do that? Yeah, before that, one question you need to ask. Why is that the code is giving us the minimum cement content here? And why it is giving us the 
I mean here in both plane as well as in RCC it's giving. Yeah, one one thing I need to tell. Uh, I told you that uh, we need to refer for RCC. Okay. Suppose if you are doing for PCC, that is plain cement concrete, then you have to refer this table. But for PCC, and usually we don't go with this. Usually we put RCC structurally. So always we'll be using this table, the 4.7. Okay. Yeah. Now again, one thing. Why is that the code is telling us a minimum cement content? This much minimum you have to use. And water, you should not go beyond this. Why is that uh, code is trying to put this restriction? What is the reason behind that? We'll try to see that. So coming to the minimum cement content. Yeah. First is proper hydration and blocking of capillary pores. Because once you prepare a concrete and all, no, there should be proper hydration and blocking of whatever small, small pores we have. So that will be filled by the cement since cement is fine in nature. To get that, the code is trying, telling us to make use of minimum cement content. Second is to get alkaline environment around the steel reinforcement. That is, we know that once we prepare a concrete, a concrete is highly alkaline. The pH will go somewhere close to 13. And for the pH to go up to 13, we need to have that much amount of cement. So that is why code is restricting us or telling us or imposing us that this much cement, minimum cement you have to use in this particular exposure condition. So that my concrete will be alkaline in nature. So if it is alkaline, we know that there won't be any, I mean, corrosion cannot happen that easily. Next is filling up, up filling up fine pores with the fine aggregate because we know that, right? Whenever we prepare concrete, we want our concrete to be more dense in nature. Let us say this one container I'm taking. So if I'm preparing a concrete, first I'm going to put my coarse aggregate. This will be my coarse aggregate. So in between the coarse aggregate, what will happen? There will be voids. Those voids will be filled by whom? By the fine aggregate. So this will be filled by the fine aggregate, right? Now in between the fine aggregate, again, there will be voids, isn't it? So that has to be filled by whom? The cement, because cement is even finer than the sand, right? So those will be filled by the cement now. So if you if cement has to be filled here, that means that much amount of cement should be there in a mixture, right? So if that much amount of cement should be there, that is why the code is telling us to put this much minimum cement so that filling up fine pores with the fine aggregate. Last is to contribute to the cohesiveness and prevent segregation of the concrete. So why segregation happens if you don't add proper cement, if there is no good cement paste and all, the uh, aggregates will not try to bind each other as a result of that when you pour the concrete and all, no, there will be segregation in the sense your coarse aggregate will fall first and then the cement paste since uh, your, mi your mix will become more harsh and all. So you get a lot of aggregates. So I don't want that to happen. And coming to this point is cohesiveness as far as possible. My concrete, even though I'm making use of different ingredients like coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, water, uh, cement and all. At the end, they have to act as a single unit. They have to be cohesive in nature. And if they have to be cohesive in nature, cement is that particular thing who actually binds everyone, right? So that cohesiveness will come with the help of cement. That means again, that much minimum cement should be there. So these are the reasons why we need to, why the code is telling us uh, to make use of a minimum cement in the code book. Next is why maximum water cement ratio. Maximum what because we know that if we try to add, uh, if you try to increase the water cement ratio, the strength of my concrete will come down. We have seen that from the graph. First is low permeability for moisture and chemicals. If you're putting more and more water, what will happen? The permeability is going to increase. If permeability is going to increase, then what will happen? The water will try to uh, seep in through the concrete. So I don't want that to happen as far as possible. I want low permeability. So that is why we are going to restrict the water cement ratio. Corrosion of the reinforcement. And the last one is a lesser depth for carbonation. We have understood what is carbonation in the chapter three, right? Uh, when uh, carbon dioxide enters the concrete, so that will react. And as a result of that, what is going to happen? The corrosion is going to happen, right? So in order to uh, safeguard all these things, the code is telling us to make use of the maximum. It's going to put us a, a bar on the maximum cement ratio and on the minimum cement content. Yeah. Now going forward, next we are into the Step six. So this step we'll try to see in the problems only. Here it is a uh, bit difficult to understand because we have to check what, what is a coarse aggregate given and what is a fine aggregate given in which zone that fine aggregate is given. Whether the, my fine aggregate is zone one, zone two, zone three or zone four. And maximum size of the aggregate usually we go with the 20 mm aggregate only. For this particular 20 mm you have to check what zone is given. And based on that zone we try to take out these values, right? Next is, yeah, give me a minute.
Yeah. The next one is the step six is for the mix calculation. This will try to see all this point later. Now it won't be. We are not not in a position to understand this unless we try to solve the numericals. Next is step six about the mix calculation. Volume of concrete is equal to one cubic meter. Therefore, volume of a cement will be mass of cement divided by specific gravity of cement into one divided by thousand cubic meter. With this, we'll get the volume of cement. Coming to the volume of water, mass of water divided by specific gravity of water into one divided by thousand cubic meter, we'll get volume of water. Volume of chemical admixtures. If you are using mass of chemical admixture divided by specific gravity of admixture into one by thousand, this will also give me will give me volume of chemical admixture. Then volume of all in aggregates. All in aggregates in the sense coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, everything. If you try to add together, so a a is this one that is total volume of concrete. Whatever volume of concrete you have, no. In that you deduct b. B is volume of cement, right? Out of concrete, if you take out cement, c stand for water. And if you deduct the chemical admixture also, what is left out? Fine aggregate and coarse aggregate is left out. So that will give me volume of all in aggregate. That is whatever volume of concrete you have. In that you take out or deduct cement. In that you deduct water. In that you deduct chemical admixture. Whatever portion is left out, no, that is my fine aggregate and the coarse aggregate portion, right? Yeah. So next is coming to the coarse aggregate and the fine aggregate. How do you find that mass of a coarse aggregate is equal to a into Volume of e in the sense this one whatever answer you are getting here no let us say you got answer as um, let us say zero point six or whatever it may be zero point six into volume of coarse aggregate into specific gravity of coarse aggregate into thousand kg similarly mass of fine aggregate is equal to e into volume of fine aggregate into specific gravity of fine aggregate into thousand kg if you try to do this you are going to get each and every answer that means we'll get volume of cement we'll get volume of water admixture. Then we'll get volume of coarse aggregate. We'll get volume of fine aggregate. That's it. Come to step number seven. You have to put whatever answer you are going to get. No, put for cement this much kg per cubic meter. Water is this much this much kg per cubic meter. Fine aggregate is this much. Coarse aggregate is this much. Chemical admixture is this much. Water cement ratio. Anyhow, we have got it from the previous slides and all. That's it. Now, once you prepare this slide, now you have to check the workability. Now, let us say initially when I wanted to prepare this particular mixed design, um, the site people wanted. People those who work in the site they wanted a slump of around 100 mm. Okay, they wanted this slump of 100 mm. For that I have done the design, and this is a design what I have got. Let us say some values will take randomly. Let us say I got 390 here. I got uh, you know uh, let us say 100. Okay, I'm taking some random 105. Let us say this I'm getting some uh, 800. Let us say uh, this I'm getting some 980. Chemical admixture. Let us say. To thirty and water cement ratio. Let us say I have taken point five. This is my final mix design. What I have got. Now I'll try to prepare a mix design of this. Let us say one m cube of concrete. I'll take and for that I'll prepare a concrete. Then once I prepare the concrete, I'll prepare a. I'll make use of this slump cone. We have seen that slump cone, and in that slump cone we'll try to put this concrete, whatever mix design, and then we'll try to see the slump of this concrete. Whether it's able to get a, whether we are able to successfully able to get hundred mm slump or not. If you are able to get this 100 mm slump, then first criteria is done. Second, we'll try to prepare the cube out of this, and we'll try to do the test on this. Okay, for this particular mix design, we'll try to do the test on the cube, and we'll do the curing up to 28 days. After that, we'll try to do the compressive strength test. Let us say we started with M30 grade of concrete, right? So now, after doing a test on this, I need to get a strength more than 30 newton per mm square. Only then I can say that this particular mix design, what I've done, it is fit. And it can be used in the site for a workability of 100 mm and for a strength of M30 grade of concrete. So if it, if, for example, if 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 you're not able to get a slump of 100 mm, then you have to play with the water cement ratio or you have to play with the um, fine aggregate and the cement content. You have to change the proportion of this. Again, you have to go back do the same procedure. Even after doing that, also if it's not happening, if if you're not going to get the strength, then completely discard this. Then you try to go with a different trial. Instead of taking water cement ratio of 0.45, you can go with 0. Point, let us say 0.42 or 0.43 admixture. You try to add a bit more admixture. So you have to play with all these things. So this is called as trial and error method. Hence, it is written here trial number one, right? So there are a lot of trials that you need to do finally to get all these answers, right? Yeah. So I hope you got a complete idea about a mixed design, how it has to be done. um in the next lecture we'll try to take up two or three different numericals and we'll try to solve them uh, in the same procedure what we have understood so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you